here in Alto 060, I'm Javier Mota, and I'm uh, with uh, Lindsay Brooks, uh, Senior Editor of Automotive Engineering. Uh, so Lindsay, um, we were talking about the, the cars that got ahead in the first place, Toyota with the, with the Prius, and then the Americans didn't do much for a long time, until very recently, five years ago, something like that, with the Volt. That's right. So, well, and, and don't don't forget there was that period in there, and I think you alluded it, alluded to it, Javier, in the first segment of uh, what was happening in that 1990s period, and we can't forget the GM EV1, which was GM's uh, electric-only, battery-powered, electric-only car. Yeah, that's the main character of that uh, conspiracy theater, who killed the electric car, right? The documentary and all that. <laughs> that's right. And the irony of that story, no matter what side you're on, whether whether GM really did. Kill Inspired to kill it, you know, developed a car for a, over a billion dollars just to kill it, which I don't believe, but that's a whole other topic. And yeah. some people, environmentalists, think that this did indeed happen. The irony of the EV1 is that uh, many of the GM engineers who developed that car are now running GM's many hybrid and EV vehicle development program. So the engineering knowledge of the EV1 is still alive and well and being used today. Because I guess it's the basics, right? We were talking about before about the, Ford, the, the Henry Ford and uh, Ferdinand Porsche developing electric and hybrid cars 100 years ago. The basics are the basics. I was, uh, I remember I was talking to an engineer who worked in the cell phone industry or the telephone industry before that. He was working for AT&T. Well, he worked there for like 40 years, and I asked him that exactly the same thing. Like, so how things have changed with now cell phones and all these, and instead of landlines? I said, well, the basic is the basic. You just have to re-engineer the things and like make it work with the new technology. Is that the same case with cars? I, I, I agree. I mean, the one thing that's kept electrified vehicles kind of in the background until recently was really at the battery. Now, the EV1 in the mid-90s, they started out using a typical lead-acid battery, which is just like the battery in everybody's car. It's got lead plates, and there's electrolyte liquid in there, mm -hmm. and it's got a positive terminal and a negative terminal. And it's a battery that is not particularly a uh, high-performance battery, but it's designed to provide power in cold, in heat, etc. Nobody had really looked at the battery in all those years that hybrids and EVs were dormant, and all of a sudden Prius hits the market, and all of a sudden it's, well, we need more efficiency, we need zero emissions, so worldwide, um, academia, you know, uh, R&D universities, the national labs, automakers, everybody said, let's take a look at the battery again, and that's the one thing, you're absolutely right, that uh, back, you know, Ferdinand Porsche had issues with battery power. Uh, the later guys had issues with battery power. And now we're still trying to develop the ideal car battery for electrified vehicles. And there is just, there's just enormous work going on right now. Billions of dollars worldwide being put into battery development for hybrids and EVs. Yeah, they were talking, I remember when the Prius came out in 97, a few years later, uh, there was a huge debate between the Prius, uh, Toyota was, was making the Prius, and then GM was making the Hummer. <laughs> then there was, also, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there was also a debate talking about how the battery of the Prius back then was more and more uh, polluting than the Hummer. And, and, and I guess that you said that technology, that's been the, the main problem, developing the right technology for the battery. Uh, is, uh, do you agree with that uh, argument that the first Toyota battery was more polluting than the, the Hummer? Well, I, I don't know how they were uh, defining pollution. Uh, the Prius battery is the most um, used battery in the hybrid and electric vehicle field because there's been more Priuses sold than any yeah. other vehicle. And, and the Prius battery, unlike that EV1 battery, is a nickel metal hydride battery. And that's, they're the metals that constitute the chemistry of the battle of the battery, a nickel metal hydride, and it's become a very, very reliable battery chemistry. The great thing about the Prius is it delivers 99 cents on a dollar for you. Uh, uh, it's advertised as being, you know, 50 plus mile per gallon, and it delivers. And Javier, I know you've driven these cars. I mean, you get in a Prius, and you know you're going to get high fuel efficiency or high mileage uh, in that car, 
the nickel metal hydride battery was kind of the second stage of electrified vehicle battery development. Uh, it doesn't quite store as much energy as a lithium chemistry battery, and that's what everybody's working on now is variations of the lithium-type battery. And lithium batteries are in laptops, they're in consumer electronics, um, and lithium is a, a mineral that's you know found in many places, uh, and it has been found when mixed with other minerals to create a battery to be a very, it can store a lot of energy. Uh, and so it's a more high-performance battery than the nickel battery, and it's taken Toyota a long time because the company is based on reliability. It's based yeah. on creating Corollas and Camrys that are bulletproof cars. And so far, all the three generations of Prius have been very reliable, so Toyota was very reluctant to change. Now, their new plug-in Prius um, is the first Prius to have a lithium-based battery. Uh, and you need a higher performance battery if you're going to be plugging the car in uh, to charge it. So we're seeing with this new plug-in revolution, which is the Volt and the Leaf on the electric vehicle side and the plug-in Prius. We've got a um, we've got the Tesla on the high-end side. The uh, we've got GM's new Spark EV, the little Spark that's uh -huh. going to be introduced at the LA show next week. Uh, it's a battery electric vehicle. So lithium is critical to these higher performance batteries that we're seeing in all of these cars. Yeah. And so right now, um, Toyota is still the king in this technology. I mean, because they got uh, ahead of the game, as you said. But the Chevy Volt, to be one of the first. Um, Examples of this technology being having an, electro, an electric engine and also have a, a, a internal combustion engine to provide energy to the electric engine. Uh, to be the first example of this is pretty pretty good. I mean, uh, most people don't even consider it an electric car; they say it's more like a hybrid. But uh, do you think that's where the game is going to be? Is going to be a combination, or is going to be more like just electric or just hybrid? Well, it's interesting, Javier. I I really think that when the Volt came out, again, with what's called a series-type hybrid, where really the combustion engine, you know, the little gas engine, is just there to charge the battery. Uh, it's re it, and in the Volt, sometimes it does play a role in driving the wheels, but its main role is to keep the battery charged. And this is the same basic philosophy as a diesel-electric locomotive, as mm -hmm. a diesel-electric submarine. You know, there's been other devices, and even Porsche's car back in, in 1899 was a similar type of, of deal. Um, and so I've always thought that the Volt was the perfect car for the time because you don't have to worry about being stranded. You've got that combustion engine in there with, um, with say, eight or nine gallons of gas. It's a small amount of gas, but basically the car is an electric car, except when you really want to dra travel at long distance, and then the gas engine can help you get there. So the range is really good, and we're going to have petroleum fuel for, for a long, long time. I mean, it's not going to go away. Uh, and we've got gas stations on every corner. So if you want to drive from Florida up to see me in Michigan, you're not going to get there in a pure electric car. No, I believe so you need a plug-in yeah. hybrid car or a regular hybrid car to get there. And I think most of your listeners are going to be in the same uh, position. You know, it, people are selling, companies are selling battery electric cars for short-range use. But if you really want to hit the road and travel, a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid gives you the best of both worlds like the Volt does. Yeah, I did actually drove the Volt from Miami to Orlando with uh, like very little money into gas. We had to put a little bit, but it was like almost nothing. And I also once drove the hydrogen Mercedes-Benz B-Class uh, car, and it was a very funny trip because they were going around the world with this car, which is uh, of um, hydrogen, uh, compressed hydrogen uh, energy, but <laughs> the support team was like, Eight huge trucks, two <laughs> two sprinters with a, a huge pump to compress the hydrogen and all that. So the technology is there, but the infrastructure is not there yet. But you know, it's interesting too because we were talking about the early days of cars in general, and it's really not so different. You know, if you had a gasoline car, you were the first on your block back in 1905. You know, you had to, like you said, you had to go to your pharmacy. Yeah. Maybe they had gasoline. 
maybe they didn't. It's really no different 110, 20 years later with uh, trying to find a place to charge your car. If you've got a compressed natural gas car or a hydrogen car to find, you know, where the stations are to get that kind of fuel. I really think the future, I know you want to get to this a little bit later in your later segment, but I really think the future is going to be a combination of all these different yeah, fuels. Of everything, yeah, and, and that's pretty much the answer I get whenever I, I, I talk to engineers and executives and all that. I mean, they still think that the internal combustion engine has a long time to go on. So we're talking... Here in Auto Center Center, in this special show about electric cars, hybrid cars, plug in hybrid cars, with uh, Lynn Snake Brooks from the senior editor for Automotive Engineer. And then before we go on the last segment, we have like one more minute in on this one. Can you please uh, tell people where can they go uh, and find more information about your website? Oh, well, um, our magazine, Automotive Engineering International, is published by the Society of Automotive Engineers. And you can go to AEI online. Dot Org. That's AEI-online.org to see our magazine online. And if you're an automotive engineer, you should really be a member of the SAE. Many of them are. Excellent. So when we come back, we're going to talk about a new car that is like causing a roar everywhere, the Tesla Model S. Everybody's talking about it like the car of the future. Esto es Auto 060. Estamos hablando con Lindsay Brooks de la... Eh, sobre un especial de autos eléctricos, autos híbridos. No se vayan que ya regresamos aquí en Autos 060. <música> Thank <laughs> you.